talk about never judging a book by its cover. When I saw the trailer for Mad Woman in the Attic and saw the red girl, the old Ronnie, I had no idea what we were going to expect. And I thought, whatever it was, it was going to be complicated and possibly really painful to look through. How wrong I was. The year is 2059. An old Ronnie Chandra sits alone in the attic of Bannerman Road. She tells her story to a young child about her mistake which causes the shocking outcome for Sarah Jane and the others. She explains how she wasn't much appreciated so decided to work alone on a mysterious case with a demon alien named Eve in a theme park. Unfortunately, all doesn't go too well and in the end it ends up ruining her life forever. This is a very sad story to go through, especially in Ronnie's perspective. For a character driven story this is one of the best the show has to offer. Since she was basically Maria's replacement throughout series 2, this is probably a well done story for Ronnie to actually stand out as a character. She believes that she's more of an outsider and was not taken seriously. I like it when we get an episode told by a companion's perspective, we get to see them do something on their own and sometimes it can either turn out good or bad and in Ronnie's case it started off good but it does end up badly since we do start off the episode with an old Ronnie talking to a child in the attic about her mistake and her scenes with Eve the Red Demon alien are actually sweet to look through. And how she ended up like that, I guess it's kinda strange but it's actually unexpected. It's something you weren't expecting would happen and that makes the impact even more heartbreaking. And how she gets out of this, I guess you can call it an ex machina but I guess it's kinda sweet. Nothing big, grand or emotional, but small and sweet. Eve is possibly one of the more pitiful characters in the show. Sure she looks like Satan's daughter, but she is actually like a teenage young child who hasn't gotten used to her abilities. There are some moments in which she does act like an average teenage girl, talks about fit boys, cool things, you're so boring, giggles etc. But thankfully, there's not that many. She's not really a bad guy, she's just a child abandoned from her family and wants to have some fun. Plus where she came from and what her species could do is definitely in relation to the, to the time war in Doctor Who. We get moments of the characters seeing flashbacks and foreshadows of future episodes, including Sarah Jane's adventures with the Doctors played by John Pertwee, Tom Baker and David Tennant, as well as clips from the previous adventures. We also get a glimpse of David Tennant's appearance in the next episode, but I think it would have been good if this episode didn't take place straight after this one. If they wanted to make the return of the Doctor exciting, then I wouldn't recommend having that episode take place straight after this episode. We also get Harry the Caretaker, played by Brian Miller, who was actually Elizabeth Sladen's real life husband. And he's actually a pretty sweet character, heck one of the sweetest actors in television. Every scene I see of him in this episode I just want to give this guy a hug. We also get K9's return to the show and this time for good. It's nice that the show finally closes the black hole subplot which was briefly mentioned in Invasion of the Bane. And just from one little moment of dialogue with K9 and Mr. Smith, we can see the relationship between the two. I guess the only nitpicks I have is that maybe some of the transitions from the attic to the past could have done better. For example, we get a shot of old Ronnie looking at herself in the mirror and then it cuts to a younger Ronnie doing the same movements. Maybe it could have been good if the scenes were dissolved together or morphed into the next scene or maybe something like how they did with the opening and the ending of this story. Look at the first transition, we get a ghostly low op opacity of the characters in the past scattered around the attic around the old Ronnie and the child, with the camera exactly in the same position. Maybe it would have been good if they had more of that for some of the other transitions. While Samuel Lloyd sounds like a passionate character, someone who is stuck alone with his old friend is off doing other things, the actor who plays him doesn't actually show that much passion in the episode. And for the love of god, does every other male character have to have the same hairstyle? While the one who plays old Ronnie does brilliantly well, there's really only one nitpick I can't stop asking myself. Why is she called the Mad Woman? Yeah, she lives in the attic, but there's nothing that makes me think that the world thinks she's mad. She's just a sick, lonely woman in the attic. There's nothing there that screams mad. 
So overall, I really like this episode. This is a very bittersweet episode. It's also a nice episode to show the audience, kids and some adults, that you don't need to be alone. Whether you've moved away or lost someone you care about, there is always someone there to keep you company. And for a character-driven story, this is one of the best. So if you like, feel free to go up in the attic of Bannerman Road and experience the story for yourself.